Welcome, Welcome to the Nightly Rant with your, your hosts, hosts, Mike and Toria. This is the show where we examine society from a sarcastic point of view. If you like insane conversations, this is definitely the show for you. Let's get into today's topic. YPN people, I don't know about you, but I love helping out a friend. That's why I want to shout out my friend Brian Little and his podcast, Your favorite blockhead. This is the only show that manages to weave together peanuts and MMA into one heck of an amazing podcast. You can find your favorite blockhead wherever your favorite podcasts reside and at yourfavoriteblockhead.com. Do me a huge favor and listen to Brian's show. You'll be entertained and you'll help out a friend. Now, as I said, let's get into today's topic. I am such a fucking idiot. He's pissed, people. Be be prepared. The rant is coming. I am so angry. Me, of all people, I am so mad. What did you do now? Tell the people. Well, I knew that our Edison bill, you know, it had gotten really high with the air conditioning. Thank and you, so, Southern California heat waves. And at the same time, business dropped off quite a bit. So... I went on a payment arrangement with them. No problem. It was no big deal. And then I went, you know, I thought the payment was due on the 8th. I should check. Okay. So I go and I check, and it says it's not due until the 18th. So, okay. I Woo. messed it up, you know, whatever. Why does any of this make you an idiot? Because then I go and take a nap. As I'm waking up from my nap, the phone is ringing, and I look, and I... See, like, Southern California, and I think, oh, it must be Southern California, Edison, verifying my... Payment arrangement? Payment arrangement, right. And so I pick it up, and it says, your power is scheduled for termination of your account in 30 minutes. We'll be shutting off your power for non-payment. And I'm like, that makes no sense. So I get on hold, and I wait for the person to... Um, tell you what the fuck's tell going me what's on? going on, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And wait for a good five minutes, maybe longer. Getting saltier and, and saltier. Yeah, so getting up upset. Desk. Yep. I'm like, what the <laughs> hell's going on? And finally, they pick up, and she goes right into the whole spiel about how you know, oh well, your last payment hasn't been received yet, and um, therefore, you know, there's a cutoff order, and for the next thirty minutes from now, and I said. That doesn't make any sense. I said, literally, maybe three hours ago, I checked, and it says my next payment's not due until October the 18th. Where did you see that, sir? And I said, in the online system. She goes, well, I don't see it in our system, sir, and I have to go by what's in our system. Okay. And I'm like, you have an email address, right? She goes, yeah, I go, I could send you a screenshot of what I'm seeing. Mm-hmm. No, sir, that's not acceptable. It's, I have to be able to see it. I was like... All right, this is really weird, but okay. You are not Um, your normal level of suspicious. And so then she said, well, here, if you make this minimum payment, then I can stop that from happening. And I said, okay, no problem. Let's make the minimum payment. Assuming she would use my normal payment method in my account, right? Like like if I called T-Mobile, that's another discussion for another day. But if I were to call (laughs) T-Mobile and have them make a payment over the phone... They would have, they would ask me, do you want to use the card ending in X, Y, Z, A? And I'd say yes. And then they would do it. Yeah. Um, I assumed they would be like, do you want to use the payment method called? And, you know, because they're named all the payment methods. Yeah. Big Mike's would, payment method. And we would do it. And <laughs> <laughs> she was like, no, 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 you have to use like a, a debit card or a credit card. And then she said, then she gets me to give her the card Pardon number. Me. And then she says, okay, hold on. Um, what's that number that I just sent to you? And then I quickly looked and I gave her the number like a dummy. That's where I'm a moron. Right there. I'm a moron. Never, ever, people, don't ever be stupid like me. Don't give out those stupid numbers to anybody. Someone calls you and asks for the damn number. Tell them to stick it up their ass. Literally. That's what I would say. Straight up their ass or sideways? All the way. 
Like the rock shine used to it up say, real nice. Shine it up real nice. Turn that some bitch sideways and stick it straight up your candy ass. That's what the rock used to say <laughs> all the time. I think he still does say it actually. I'm sure he does. Yeah. Well, the point here is that that was moronic of me to do, but it didn't dawn on me because I didn't really read the message. You're in a hurry, right? You think you're working with someone you trust, right? Yeah. Yep. Well, then the next thing that happens is. She says, well, would you like to, uh, okay, we're done now. You can hang up if you'd like. She goes, but I'm going to have to call the dispatcher to stop them from, you know, coming and cutting off the power. All right. Check this shit out. So I hold, so I hold listening to stuff. You know, there's like little SCE messages, like dropped in every once in a while. Um, Their system was pretty sophisticated yeah. for, for what? Yeah. And so then she came back and she goes, okay, it's all taken care of Mr. Mahoney. Um, and then she said something about, Payment confirmation she'd given me. And she said, okay, have a great day. Click. And she hung up. Oh, she said, oh, you'll get your email of your payment within 24 to 48 hours. And I was like, that's when it hit you. WTF. And she hung up. So I ran in here and I opened up the SCE account again. While that was opening, I opened up the Chase account in another window. And I'm looking at the SCE account and it's saying that there's no payment due till October 18th. Right. So I call. And I say, I call SCE because it hasn't gone through Chase. I call SCE. They're closed. SCE is closed, but they're not telling me that there's been a $300 payment made. What so else I'm like, did they okay, tell you for sure, recording? For sure. Well, then they said, oh, yeah. They said, oh, and at this time, we are not currently turning people off for non-payment of services at this time. Makes sense. It's pandemic time. The utilities across the country aren't turning you off. <laughs> but here I am like a moron once again. Yeah. And... You know, people, I see these scammers 50 million miles away. I see them all of the time. She will tell you that I will say to her, oh, here's somebody just followed me on Instagram. You watch. As soon as I follow them back, I'm going to get a direct message. It's going to happen like two seconds later. You watch. And I'll follow them back and I'll say, oh, he's there the, they are. He's the Instagrammer sleuth. There they are. There they are. They're there. Scammer sleuth. Yeah. So it's crazy that I missed those there's so many red flags. Like, for instance, people, anybody would verify your account information with the person that's on the phone. They don't know who picked up your phone. I mean, that's that's the thing. She didn't even ask you your name or anything. She didn't ask to confirm my name or anything. And that's what I'm saying. It's like that was a huge red flag for me. But I was, you know, 98% asleep. So the moral of the story today is... Never, ever, 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 ever give anything to anybody over the phone because every system these days has ways to securely transfer information. And I remember dealing with, you know, talk about T-Mobile again. I remember dealing with T-Mobile and they said, oh, they were on, it was on Twitter that I was dealing with them. They said, sir, to, in order to continue this discussion in a secure fashion, this is a code that only works from your phone number. Right. So in other words, it couldn't be a spoofed phone number. It can only work from the hardware's phone number. Right. And boom, I was on this secure chat on iMessage with them. You yep. Know? And it was in a secured area. And it was great. You know, and so you knew that you were talking to the right people. This wasn't like that. I think I think what other people should do is it's the trust but verify. So obviously Southern California Electric, no, Southern yeah, California Edison, Edison is a trustworthy company as for normal people. Trustworthy yeah. company overall. Yes. Uh huh. They provide electricity to all the people in Southern California. Anyway, obviously trustworthy. If they call you and anything seems weird, hang up and call them back. What's the harm? Yeah. Yeah, because they'll always find your account. They'll always connect you up the right way. And yeah, in fact, that's how a lot of people have found out that they're being scammed is that they hang up, they call back, and then the people who call back, they go, what are you talking about? If the IRS calls you, hang up and call back. But I'm going to tell you something. This person was really good at what they did because the opening exchange went, so it looks like you're scheduled for disconnection in 30 minutes from now. They're already on their way. And I said, that doesn't make any sense. I'm looking at a payment arrangement that says my payment isn't due until October 18th, which is still more than a week away. Right. So why are we having this conversation? She just went right into, I don't see any payment arrangement on my side. And I have to go by what it shows in my system, sir. Like, 
Which Boom. shockingly makes sense. Of course she has to go by what? She was super smooth with that, though. Like, yeah. wow. That's because she probably does it a thousand times a day. And that's what caught me off guard, I think, is how smooth she was at providing, you know, like the reality of who she was was just so real to me. So there has been one instance in my existence where I've come like millimeters away from being scammed by someone. And it was way back when I was in college. And Alicia and I were looking for another roommate. And I advertised it on Kijiji, which is basically Canadian Craigslist. Craigslist. Yeah. But less, it's less ugh, than Craigslist. You say so. Craigslist in Canada is full of really weird people, like the grossest people in Grossland. Anyway, I get this person who reaches out and they want to move in and they're an exchange student from France. And I was like 19. So excuse the dumbass I'm about to admit that I am. <laughs> 19. And I believed her, and then she's supposed to send this check for the first month's rent and a security deposit, blah, 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 blah. I actually, I gave her the address. I get the check. The check seemed a little sketchy, and I was like, whatever, fuck it. I'm going to take it to the bank. They'll tell me if it's real or not. It was fake. I had to take it to the police department. Wow. Yep. I've had something like that happen to me before, too. Yeah. One time, one time, my mother... (laughs) was had been living with my sister like in a guest house and there came to a point where my mother wasn't getting along with my sister and it was driving my brother crazy listening to my mother complain about not getting along with my sister (laughs) so he said to me and my wife at the time go try to find her an apartment in this area this is the budget we're like who's paying for this she can't afford that and he goes i'm paying for the whole thing don't worry about it all right cool no problem. So we went and we found her this place. It was a really nice, cute little place. And then from that point onward, once a week, we would go take her grocery shopping so that she could go grocery shopping. You know, she had her oxygen tank that she had to take with her. Yeah, well, that was tough. Those are always tough. Well, when we when when she uh, wanted to um, move again, mm-hmm. she wanted to move closer to me. So Sense. we found this place in Beverly Hills and. We were going to tell my brother to go look at it and then put a deposit down. We were that close, right? And then you get this paper that goes around, you know, the event community paper. It goes uh-huh. in the newspaper that goes around. It comes around to the, to the apartment like two days later and it's man arrested for, um, Craigslist apartment scam. What he was doing was he had keys to the apartment because he used to live in that apartment years back oh my and God. they never changed the locks. Okay, that's on the landlord right there. Right. They never changed the locks. They knew someone moved out, so they just made it that they had to leave in a hurry and we'll rent you this place. You know, it's worth it's worth a thousand dollars a month. I'll rent it to you for five hundred dollars a month because I just want to get it out of the way and I'll pay the other five hundred dollars a month to the right. landlord. Right? Okay, we were gonna do it this close. It was fake. Oh my god! Completely fake. Or how about like when you try to like buy or sell a car and it's always somebody in the military who's stationed, you know, in the weirdest ass place. And, um, all you, all they're going to do is, you know, you give them some information, you mail them a cashier's check and they'll mail you the key to the car. And then if you don't want the car, you can return it to them and they'll return your check. Yeah. Cause they're going to return the cashier's check. That's yeah. as good as cash. Yeah. Okie doke. Exactly. Like, and that, that's the thing. It's always, that's exactly where I've been with that issue. Like, Come on. You guys think we're stupid? Obviously. Doing short-term rentals is like the place where scammers are now. They want to scam these people who are doing the short-term rentals out of their money. So they they want to book and they want to book for like 2 weeks and they're going to send you all this money. And then I don't I don't know how their scam is supposed to work because I always tell them that when I when I sense scam, I always tell them the rate is like 5 times what it's supposed to be and then they kind of Oh, I'd be happy to pay it. And I know that they're a scammer at that point, And I, yeah. we just stop talking to them because I don't want to yeah. go down that road. Yeah. But smart. I wonder. That's a, smart, that's a smart way to weed out who is and is not a scammer. Right. Because a normal person is going to be like, holy sweet Jesus, but I saw it listed on Airbnb for 200 bucks a night. Why are you charging me a thousand? Yep. But nobody, none of them have ever done that. I've, I've been right every time. <laughs> so <laughs> I, don't, I don't know where that scam goes. What are you gonna do? Come stay in my house for two weeks for free? Like maybe I guess. Doesn't seem I like know. you're getting much out of it at that point. 
I don't know. It's it's weird. I mean, I wonder sometimes. Do you ever wonder, like, I know you guys have fail safes for this, and you can reveal what it is if you want or not. I don't care. But um, these people who move, who try to check in and then claim that it was the property wasn't the way it was advertised, and that there's blood splatters on the wall, and there's this <laughs> and there's that, and then they have actual pictures of your unit with that stuff on it. I mean, it's, it says to me that they bring that stuff with them and set it up you to came, make it look bad. You came down the other night, fr- Friday night, and you were like, you just got a message and it seemed urgent. You were like rattling off all this stuff that was wrong with one of the properties. I have a video from Friday morning where the place was perfect. <laughs> and these people checked in and that's what they did. They, they mess up the beds and they like spray stuff on the beds they like drip nail polish on things to look like blood. They destroy our stuff. And Airbnb almost always refunds them all their money. And I don't understand what their point is. They get their money back, but they also have to leave. Like, what was the point in all of that? That's what I was sitting here trying to think was like, what's the upside for them? It's happened to us enough times that it's not like a, a thing. Like it, it happens a lot. That's so odd. You don't get it. I know that there are the people who are just a little on the shady side. So they check in and then they make a little bit of a mess. And then they're like, oh, I don't, I paid $120 cleaning fee. I want my cleaning fee back. Whatever. Well, that and like, I, the other thing I can think of here is think about this part. This is why they do it. They use, if they come and use your place, like this one that was trying to check in the other night, the message you're talking about, uh-huh. they're going to obviously go ahead and check in. They got nowhere else to go. They're going to go ahead and check in. Now they're using your place. Now they're going to string out the negotiation with you on what they want for, you know, let's say it's five day booking. They're going to get to day three or four and string you out. And then they're bailing on the last day. And then they're going to say, I want all my money back because this place was not as advertised. I negotiated in good faith with this landlord and they wouldn't get, they wouldn't give me what I wanted. So That's I want all my money do. back. They immediately contact Airbnb and tell Airbnb they want a refund. Airbnb refunds them their money and they leave. But the point is they, they, they could stay there for days if they wanted to. That, that's only happened one time out of all the other times this has happened. Every other one has been like, I got a hotel and I left. That's okay, so odd. Hi. That's so odd. Then that would infer that they actually did find the property in their condition. How? I don't know. If you have a video of the day before. Day of. The day of, and it would look perfect, and then all of a sudden it's effed up. Who did it? These people 100% eff it up. But, but I don't, I don't know understand, if, but what's the what's the play here? Like I You, don't you know just effed up there. someone's stuff. And then you leave and get your money back. So you don't get to stay in their place, but you didn't have to pay anything. So you end up nowhere better, except you basically committed a crime by going into the person's house and destroying things. So it almost seems like you as the landlord could call the cops and be like, yo, this is what happened. And they're going to know they did it on purpose. I don't know if sometimes these people don't like the neighborhood where the house is. And so they go in and they like they mess invent, up the bathroom and pile hair everywhere. And they invent a reason to get out of their deal. Exactly. I'm sure that is what happens some of the time, but it can't be all of it. That can't be all of it. Not all of our places are in downtown Los Angeles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, no, it makes sense. I mean, I could see somebody using like whatever means possible Yeah. to get out of a super shady neighborhood. I mean, I can remember. When my first wife and I were married and we went for a trip to San Francisco and we did one of these things like the Los Angeles times used to do these, um, these, uh, travel exposes and they did a thing on San Francisco and they did this, this great hotel, you know, super quaint old fashioned hotel. And it was super cheap because it was old. Had you not? I'm trying Please to take breathe. this out. Okay, well, having a hard time breathing. Just keep going. Anyway, so they give it to you cheap because they want you to come stay there, and it's an old place, and they don't have that many rooms, so they feel like it's better to be full and get fully paid every single time than it is to have vacancies because they overcharge. So anyway, long and short of it, we go there. We get there like during the morning time because we want to like, of course, maximize our Friday, Saturday, Sunday trip. We get there in the morning time by plane, and. 
get to off the trolley car and we walk in and it's great. You know, here's the place. Oh, it's so cute. And we, um, put our stuff in the room and then she's like, let's go explore the city. So we get out, go explore the city. We don't get back till like 1130 at night. <laughs> there were people with trash cans in the street with fires raging out of the trash cans. Okay. There, there were people sitting on the ground, injecting themselves with needles. Okay. That's but what happens we, at the property in downtown LA too. <laughs> but we didn't try to pull a fast one and get our money back. We just, we were more careful about when we came back, we took a taxi cab back. We didn't walk back. We took a taxi cab back, you know, things like that. It cost us a little bit more money, but we saved so much money by staying there that it almost didn't matter. And we were young enough at the time that we didn't care. I used to work with this guy who was a bit of a, bit of a horror movie buff. And so he's taking his family on this vacation and they come, come to the U S back when I was still living in Canada and they stayed at the Bates motel. Like the one from the movie Psycho. Okay. Yeah, I know which, okay. which one you're talking about. So they expect it to be a little touristy, right? I mean, it's from an Alfred Hitchcock movie. Sure. No, it was just gross. He said the rooms looked like somebody had recently been murdered in them and not in a kitschy, ooh, look, a horror movie hotel kind of way. <laughs> that sucks. <laughs> he ranted about it for like the entire two hours of a staff meeting when he came back from his trip. <laughs> Wow. Yeah. That's crazy. Because, I mean, I don't know. In a way, that almost feels like a scam. Yeah. Yeah. But the the charlatans used to be on street corners trying to steal your money. Now they're on the internet. So that's a party. Well, but like like when, when we were in Vegas and they approached us about the vacation club and they gave all of those discounts and they told us, oh, it's only good until 3 o'clock today. It's only good till 3 o'clock today. Right. It wasn't good only till 3 o'clock that day. <laughs> No, it was good every Friday to through the end of the year or something yeah. like that. Yeah, some crazy shit like that. Like you, you didn't have to grab it right then, and especially with as much man. as we go there, plus we're moving there. Right, we would have been fine. But I don't know. It's stuff like that that kind of gets under my skin. So to bring it full circle, don't be morons and do what I did. Make sure that if you get a call and they say your power is going to be cut off, know two things: Southern California Edison. In our case, and I'm sure most utility companies do the same, follow the similar rules, because I'm sure there's regulations that force them to, but that's okay. It creates conformity. They also have to send you a written disconnect notice. Yes, and, and, and they, um, they have to verify your account. They have to verify your account. Have to. Yeah. And if they don't. So what it says is to ask for their direct phone number and their employee name and number, their employee number. Yep. And then you just call in to the direct number and you should get them. If you don't get them, you know why? Because they're full of poop. And with that, I will say <laughs> it feels ridiculous to get taken advantage of. By a smooth talking scammer lady. And I'm going to tell you guys, don't be racist. I know what all of y'all are thinking. This person was 100% American. An, a non ethnic American. Okay, that's what I'm going to say. American accent all the all way. All the way through. There was no, you know, they weren't from India. They weren't from Pakistan. None of that BS. They weren't Nigerian. They were 100%. You know, American citizens. I'm going to put it that way. Okay. Born and bred here in the United States. <laughs> that They could be black, white, Mexican, Chinese, mixture of all of those things. Nobody cares. All I'm saying is they were here in this country as natives, not as visitors. Natives. Point taken. So stop with the damn fucking racism. I hate the racism. So there you go. Now that, I'm Fucking done. I'm pissed again. Mike is maximum salty, reasonably so. And on that note, good night, everyone. Hasta the bye bye, scammer bitches. Thank you for listening to the Nightly Rant. If you enjoyed the show, please give us a five star rating on Apple Podcasts or Google Play. If you didn't enjoy the show, please just ignore that previous request for a rating. This has been a Yogi's Podcast Network production. <laughs>